them, but the first one is the mid-segment theorem. So the mid-segment theorem, if you have any triangle, or really any segment, it's, it's, um, it doesn't have to be a complete triangle. Uh, make this a little bit longer here. All right, so let's say we have a triangle that looks something like this. It doesn't matter what your triangle looks like. All right, now um, we're going to find the midpoint of each side of this triangle. I'm not going to construct the midpoint or measure the midpoint. I'm just going to get as close as I can on this. So I'm just going to um, get as close as I can. So I'm going to have a midpoint right here, and I'm going to show with tick marks that that this point is the midpoint. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just getting as close as I can. And the same right here. Just try to get in the middle of each one of those segments the best way you can. If we were constructing this, we would actually find the perpendicular bisector to find the midpoints. But for our example, this is going to be fine. So when you connect midpoints of a triangle, and I'm going to make this a dash line right here just so that we can talk about that. When you connect that, that is called a mid-segment, okay? Sometimes you just see one of them, and sometimes you see all three of them. So if you happen to see all three of them, it forms a triangle inside the original figure. Something like this, and something like this. So that's called a mid-segment triangle when you construct that. You don't always see all three of those of those um, segments, but you could connect those if you needed to. Now, when you're looking at this, what this figure does when you when you uh, connect midpoints of a triangle. I'm just going to label this triangle with angle measures and side length. All right, so what this does is it makes triangles that are congruent to our other triangles. So this one's going to slide up here and be congruent, and it's going to slide over here and be congruent. And I didn't construct mine, so mine's not going to be perfect, but um, those three triangles would be congruent, okay? So um, I could label this angle and this angle the same. So that's going to tell us that this mid-segment and segment AC are parallel, so that that's one property that's going to happen. And this segment right here is also going to have two of the uh, tick marks. Same way here. This is going to have the same angle measure. You can measure all, uh, label all of the angles if you want to, but this is going to have one tick mark. And then if you um, if you rotate that figure, then you're going to have uh, this congruent triangle as well. Okay, so this is going to have three three tick marks. This one has three, and this one has three. Now mine's not perfect because I didn't measure my midpoints. So if I measured those, you could see that they would be exactly the same. But we really have one, two three, four congruent triangles inside of this main triangle. So most of the time, the way that you use this, and again, my drawing is not going to be to scale, but let's say that this is two units and this is two units. Then this value right here that has one tick mark is also going to be two units. If this is five units here and this is five units here then when we slide this up this segment right here is also going to be five units and i don't know i'm going to let this be maybe four i'm going to let this be four units right here so if this is four units um i covered up one of those tick marks this one has three so it slides over here, and this value and this value would also be four. So on your mid-segment, this right here is a mid-segment. And we have three of those. All three of those inside uh, sides of the triangle would be mid-segments. Mid-segments are parallel to the opposite side. 
So this side right here, I'm, let me go ahead and measure, uh, label this D, E, and F. So D, E would be parallel to A, C. E, F would be parallel to A, B. D, F would be parallel to B, C. So you could write all three of those. And there is a fact about their measurement, the mid-segment Oops, can't write today. Is half the length of the opposite side. All right, so on this one right here, if you look, this entire length is 10 and the mid segment is five. So it's half of this. This entire length right here is four plus four, so that's eight. And the mid segment is half of that, that's four. This entire length is four and the mid segment over here on the opposite side of that is two. So the equations that you could write, for example, if I was looking at DE, then the length of DE would be half of the length of AC. Or you could say that two of the little ones, two of the lengths of DE would equal the entire length of AC. Both of those equations are true. And you could write those same types of equations for, um, for any of the sides of this triangle.